Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be going into more true crime and we're going to be covering this book right here. It's the Ultimate Serial Killer Trivia Book. It has a lot of good facts and things like that. So I figure I'm going to start a new series going through some facts about serial killers. So stay tuned and find out what we're talking about today. Alright guys, so like I said in the intro, we're going to be starting a new series, and as you can tell, there's a new background because I'm actually filming in my closet. It's something to do. I actually have like a little table in here so I could set my camera on, and it's just a little easier. Anyway, so I got this book right here, which is the Ultimate Serial Killer Trivia Book off of Amazon and it's really cool like there's a lot of like interesting facts and statistics and some things that I didn't know. Um, I read a lot of serial killer books and things I started when I was really young and I read a lot about serial killers. So this sparked me to start going through some of my other books. So when I go I'm going to go over the facts in this book and then when it mentions somebody in this book I will do a separate video more of a deep dive on that killer. So to do that I'm using the killer book of serial killers. This is a really nice book um, and it has some trivia and stuff in it as well. I'm also using the A to Z encyclopedia of serial killers which gives a really good breakdown on different aspects of serial killers and things. I'm also using this book, which is the Serial Killers uh, True Crime Book. Um, it has a lot of facts and murders in it as well. It's also a very short book. I got this off of Amazon as well. This is my absolute favorite serial killer book ever. This is the Encyclopedia of Serial Killers. Um, this book has a lot of serial killers in it, and as you can see, like, it's very detailed. I'm also using um, True Crime Stories. Uh, this book is from People. Um, some of the serial killers were covered by People, and their stories are in here. I'm also using the Trials That Shocked the World. This is... A special edition I think this is people or times I can't remember which but this book has some really great stories in it of everything from the Salem witch trials to this evil bitch right here which is Casey Anthony I'm also using this book which is serial killers this book covers four in depth which is Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, David Berkowitz, and Dennis Nelson, but it also has some other serial killers in it. And then, of course, <laughs> a history of cannibalism. Um, because, unfortunately, there are several serial killers that are cannibals. And, as you can see right here, we have... Um, God, my mind just went blank. Um... God. Oh, well, here's Ed Gein, and we all know this one as well. He was uh, the cannibal of Milwaukee. God, why is my brain going so freaking weird? Oh my goodness. It'll come to me eventually, I swear. But anyway, this book talks, uh, it's just, as it says, a history of cannibalism. It talks about cannibalism, but it also talks about serial killers that are famous for cannibalism. And so I'm using all of these books to do deep dives. And then my mother, my birthday just passed. It was my 40th. My mother took me to the bookstore and I got this new book, which is called The Last uh, Book on the Left, which is written by the guys that do the last podcast on the left. And this is Stories of Murder and Mayhem from History's Most Notorious Ster Serial Killers. And this book covers... Jeffrey Dahmer. That's who it is. 
told you it'd come to me eventually. My brain's just not working. But this book covers Ted Bundy, Richard Chase, Ed Gein, John Wayne Gacy, Richard Ramirez, David Berkowitz, the BTK killer, Andre Chikatilo, and Jeffrey Dahmer. So this book is also going to be used in my deep dive section. But... <laughs> All of that to say, we're going to start off with some just facts out of the Ultimate Serial Killer book. And this is just out of the first chapter. I'm just kind of going to go in order. So the first chapter is Serial Killers, the Basics. So we're just going to cover some basics about serial killers. I've got my notebook here. I have taken some notes on things that we're going to cover. I'm also starting to take notes on the serial killers that I'll be covering. So, very long intro, so let's get into it. So, what is a serial killer? There are so many definitions out there that we need to nail down what we're actually talking about. So, the FBI defines serial killers as a series of two or more murders committed as separate events, usually but not always, by one offender acting alone. Now, yes, there are serial killer couples, there are serial killer teams, but it has to be at least two murders committed at different times. And those different times in between is usually what they call a cooling off period and then them going back on the hunt. So generally serial killers have an unspecified amount of time between each murder. Because once they commit the murder, they're going to come down from the rush. They're going to relive what they did. And then when that ends and they get the itch again, they're going to go on what they call the hunt to find another victim. Most jurisdictions will not consider a serial killing as a possibility until after the fourth or fifth victim, which is kind of where our legal system fucks up in this because... Maybe you catch on a little bit sooner that it is a serial killer while they're making mistakes before they perfect their craft. So, what did the term, uh, where did the term serial killer come from? So, a lot of people like to say that FBI Special Agent Robert Resler has been credited for coining the term in a lecture that he gave in the 1970s. Resler used the term while referring to David Berkowitz, aka the son of Sam. Now, um, on Netflix, there is a series called Mind Hunters, which goes through how they came about with profiling. And a lot of people like to term or like to credit them with coming up with the term serial killer and it becoming like a staple in law enforcement. But there is an earlier use of the term from 1947. Dorothy B. Hughes wrote a mystery novel called A Lonely Place. The antagonist of the book is a, quote, serial killer. So it's showing that there was a pattern before of using this term. But we also do not know what her definition of a serial killer was. But again... There's an even earlier use of the term. Ernest August Ferdinand Janot was a famous German detective who revolutionized police work by beginning what became known as behavioral profiling, which was perfected by the FBI in the 1970s, which you can watch Mindhunter to see how they came about that. So Janot was a detective in the 1930s. And he is the one who could you could say came up with a serial killer but the most famous is from the 1970s now there are four types of serial killers the four types are visionary missionary hedonistic and hold on i lost a page here but Visionary, missionary, hedonistic, and power and control killers. So we're going to go through each type of serial killer and we're going to talk about what makes them that type of serial killer and give you a uh, serial killer to show as an example. So a visionary killer is a killer that believes they are being commanded to kill. So a visionary killer would be Richard Chase, who is also known as the Vampire of Sacramento. So that is going to be my, one of my first deep dives is R Richard Chase. And that is, 
I would say that's an interesting one, but it's going to be really sick. But moving on. So now we're going to go on to mi missionary oriented killers. And these are be these believe they can rid society of what they consider to be undesi uh, the undesirable group. So a missionary oriented killer would be Peter Suckloff, aka the Yorkshire Ripper, which is going to be another one of my deep dives. These are people that think that they are committing a service, ridding the world of prostitutes, things of that nature. Hedonistic killers are killers who kill for their own personal satisfaction or sexual motivation. Now, hedonistic killers also break down into more types. So, the hedonistic part is what they call a broader term, and then you go into the more specific. So, then you have a hedonistic lust killer. And these are killers that kill for their own sexual satisfaction. So an example of that would be Edmund Kemper, a.k.a. the co-ed killer. Uh, you have the hedonistic thrill killers. And these are the killers who kill for the adrenaline rush. So an example of that would be the Zodiac killer who was never found. That's still an unsolved case. You have the hedonistic comfort killers who kill for financial or material gains. So a comfort killer example would be Dorothea Punte, a.k.a. the Death House Landlady. <clears throat> and then there is one killer who took the hedonistic subcategory literally, and that killer is Harold Shipman. Uh, Shipman was a doctor and would kill his victims. So his reign of terror expressed three types of hedonistic killers. And then the last type of hedonistic killer is the power and control killer. These killers crave domination over their victims and they want to own the victim. So Ted Bundy is one of the most famous of this category, but he shares the spotlight with people like John Wayne Gacy, Dennis Schrader, aka the BTK killer, Gary Ridgway, aka the Green River killer, Ian Bradley, David Parker Ray, Andre Chicatillo, James D'Angelo, a.k.a. the East Side Rapist, and the, it goes on. So, power and control killers generally harbor feelings of inadequacy. A large majority have violent and abusive childhoods. Usually the parents are to blame for that, but it's usually a guardian or someone in control. So when they become adults, they yearn to have control over themselves and then over other people. And these killers manipulate their victims even after death through post-mortem mutilation, sexual violation, or taking souvenirs of the victim. Everybody that I listed in there from Ted Bundy all the way to James D'Angelo all were souvenir keepers. They also would visit post-mortem or they would mutilate their victims by cutting them up to get rid of their bodies, things of that nature. So now that we've, can, we've gone through all the categories, now we need to know, do serial killer types overlap? Visionary serial killers are generally the only type that stay with just one type. Generally, a serial killer can be multiple different categories, but visionary killers believe that they're getting a vision from God or it's a, you know, it is ordained that they do this. So they usually stay in their visionary category. Other serial killers may show characteristics of multiple types, but they are typed by, quote, core characteristics. So... That would be like with, like Peter Suckloff, the Yorkshire Ripper. He may be a mission-oriented killer, but you can, all, like, that's what his thing was. He said that he was ridding the world of prostitutes, but he was also showing to be a power and control hedonistic killer. He also was a lust killer because he was sexually satisfied by these things. And for a portion of it, he was a thrill killer. So, as you can see, he had different categories. But his main type was the mission-oriented. So, are, the serial killers, are there serial killers who do not fit into a type? So, 
almost all serial killers will fit into one or more categories. But there are a handful of motivalists. So they don't really have a motive, serial killers. Some examples of these, uh, like one from Russia, is I'm never going to be able to say this. So I'm going to try to remember to put it down here at the end of the, at the bottom of the screen. But there is the the Petrovsky maniacs. I'm not quite sure how to say that because there's a lot of um, consonants and no vowels in there. And then from Britain, you have Robert Maudsley, who is AKA the Hannibal Killer. So there are some that will not fit into a category, but for the most part, they are going to fit into one of the four categories. So that covers the basics. So from here, I will be doing deep dives. The very first one's going to be on Richard Chase. And as you can see, I already have several, several pages of notes on Richard, but I'm going to cover these in order as they were mentioned here in this introduction. So I'm going to cover Richard Chase, aka the Vampire Sacramento. I'm going to cover Peter Suckloff, aka the Yorkshire Ripper. I will cover Edmund Kemper. I will cover, which is aka the co-ed killer. I will, I don't know if I'm going to cover the Zodiac because that is one of those unsolved and that's like trying to go in and cover Jack the Ripper since that one was unsolved. Um, I might try to look for another thrill killer to cover for that one. Uh, I will be covering Dorothea Punte, aka the Death House Landlady. I will cover Harold Shipman. Um, I'm going to pick one power control killer. Um, and I'm not sure which one it's going to be at this time, but I'm going to just pick one. Um, Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, Dennis Ryder, Gary Ridgway, and Brady, and Brady um, are all well known. So I might go for Andre Chikatilo or maybe James D'Angelo. Um, but the other ones, there's so much information out there. It's like information overload. So, those will be coming soon. Um, now that I have, like, all of my source material picked out, I will be pulling in from some online sources. But when I do deep dives, I like to have a book in hand so I can look at it. I can research their research because, you know, they always give their credits at the end. I can find other research. I like to be able to sit down and go on this page of this book. It says this. I know I was born in the 80s. I was a teen in the 90s. I remember how to do old school book reports. It's a little antiquated, but I find it to be more exacting in the information. With that said, guys, that's going to end today's video. I will be going through here and picking out some more facts and we'll cover some more killers after I finish this first set of deep dives. So with that said, guys, that's going to end today's video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.